Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan here. So for many of us, it could be very confusing to know what to do when we get paid. And because we live in a society where financial education is not put at the forefront of our education system, and given that most adults don't know how to manage money themselves, it can become a very difficult skill to pick up. So because of this, I decided to make a video discussing the five things that you should do with your money when you get paid. So if this video provides you any value, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. They both greatly help out the channel and help push this video out to as many people as possible. So let's get right into it. The first and most important thing that you do with your money when you get paid, and this is pretty obvious, but you use your money to pay your bills. Now, I think 99% of us watching this video already know that. But there's a couple of things in particular I want to talk about when it comes to this. And the big thing I want to talk about is that when you are paying your bills, consider what is necessary and what is not necessary. A lot of times we may think that something is necessary, but we really have to ask ourselves, is it really that necessary? Or is it just something that we like to have? A good example of this could be something like a Spotify membership. Let's say you spend $10 a month on Spotify membership, but you only use Spotify once a month. You really have to ask yourself, does that really make sense for me to spend $10 for something that I'm only going to use once? For some of us, it may be worth it, but for others, it may not be worth it. But this is something that you kind of have to just consider. And I know that this can be difficult nowadays, given that we put pretty much every bill on auto pay. But it's really important that we do take some time out to look at our bills and to look at places that we may be able to save money. Second most important thing to do when you get paid is to pay down high interest debt. And this is extremely important because high interest debt can really put you inside a financial trap. And in some cases, if the interest rate is too high, making the minimum payments can actually cause your loan balance to grow, making it virtually possible for you to pay off the loan if you continue to make the minimum payments. And when it comes to high interest debt, these are debts kind of like credit cards, payday loans, personal loans, in my opinion, it's pretty much any loan that has an interest rate over 5%. So if you do have any of these debts, you really need to allocate the money in your paycheck to use it to pay off these kind of debts. And when it comes to this particular topic, I actually take the approach of Dave Ramsey. I really think that this should be like an emergency to you. So if you have like an emergency fund, but you have high interest debt, you should really consider get liquidating the emergency fund and using it to pay off the high interest debt and maybe only keep in a couple thousand dollars in that account or something. Or even in a situation where you have a lot of it, you may even want to consider maybe taking a second job or driving for Uber or something of that nature. Because this debt, I'm telling you, it can really put people into a trap. So as you get paid, make it mandatory that you pay off as much of this debt as possible. So the third thing you should do with your money when you get paid is that you need to take advantage of your employer's match. So most employers either offer a $1 for $1 match or a 50 cent for every dollar match. So basically, if you put a dollar into your for, into your employer sponsored 401k, they'll either put a dollar in there or 50 cents up to a certain amount of your total income. And if you're in a situation where you have an employer that does this, it's important they take advantage of every dime that they are willing to give you. Even if your match rate is 50 cents for every dollar, and the reason why it is so important for you to take advantage of this is that think about it like this way. If you put in a dollar and your employer puts in 50 cents, that's an automatic 50% return on investment. There's no other investments that are going to give you a guaranteed 50% rate of return. So when doing this, make sure that you just follow your company's best in requirement. In some cases, this may even make more sense for you to take advantage of this versus paying down a high interest rate loan. The fourth thing you should do with your money after you get paid is to build an emergency fund. And emergency funds in place to protect you for any unforeseen expenses that may pop up, like a flat tire or a car repair or a house repair or something of that nature. So the typical advice out there is that you wanna keep about three to six months worth of expenses in a savings account. Even some financial experts go as far as saying that you should keep up to a year's worth of reserves. I'll be fully transparent here. I don't listen to any of that advice. I personally like to keep eight to 12 months worth of expenditures in a broad index fund that tracks the entire US market. So something like a VTI or a VOO. And my thinking behind this is that the worst case scenario, the, U, the entire US market falls 50%, which is something that we haven't seen 
since 2008. And for me, the way I see it is that worst case scenario, let's say the market was to drop 50%, like it did in the 2008 recession, I would still have about four to six months of expenditures left, which is what most financial experts recommend. The reason why I do this is because it would take a giant emergency for me to ever have to use all of my emergency funds. I personally like to have my money working for me and not putting it in a savings account earning 0.0000000 go fuck yourself percent every month. These next two things may seem out of order. In the comment section, let me know what you think about the order of these two and which one you prioritize more. But for me, I, I would think that the next most important thing that you do with your money is to start saving money to buy real estate. And the reason for this is that real estate has been known to be one of the best ways to build wealth in this country. And this is mostly due to the leverage returns that you get with real estate. And you don't even have to rent this property out. You could buy it and move into it and still get a good return on it. And this is mostly due to leverage returns that you get from appreciation of the house. So for example, let's say you bought a $100,000 home and it appreciates 3% every year, which is the typical rate that homes appreciate over time. So if you had bought this home with 3% down or $3,000, if the home appreciates 3%, then you basically just got a 100% return on your investment. And what did you have to do to get that return? You literally just had to pay your mortgage those 12 months, the same 12 months where you would have probably rented out a space from somebody else. And then also, let's not even forget that while you're paying the mortgages, you also are paying off principal as well which is thus only increasing your net worth. So if you own this home for 20 or 30 years, just think about how much compounding that home would have done. And this is why you could build your wealth in real estate so quickly because of these leverage returns that you get. And the leverage that you are taking on is very safe because the real estate market doesn't move as quickly as the stock market does. But this tip is only good if you do desire to buy real estate. But if you desire to be a lifelong renter, then you can skip this step and go. you can go straight to the next step. And while we're talking about the next step, let me just tell you it right now. The next thing you should do with your money is to save for retirement. And it's super important that you start saving for retirement ASAP. Even you waiting until your 30s to start saving for retirement can significantly reduce the amount of money that you have in retirement. And here's an example of that. Let's say you were to invest a dollar into the S&P 500, which has historically given returns of about 7% every year. By the time you're 65, that $1 would have turned into $22. Whereas if you wait until you're 30 and you invest that dollar in that same manner and you get that same 7% rate of return year over year, by the time you turn 65, you only have $11. So just that 10 year difference can cut your returns in half. So that's why it's so important to start saving for retirement as soon as possible. Now, when it comes to where to start saving for retirement, the two best options is usually the 401k or the Roth IRA. Which one you decide all depends on your tax situation. So it's very important that you talk to the CPA so you can get advice that pertains to your exact situation. But for most people, the Roth is a really great place to start saving for retirement. And when it comes to how much you should save for retirement, so that answer is probably gonna be different for everybody, but I think everyone should strive to at least save 15% of their income for retirement. And if you may be in a situation right now where you can't save 15% of your income, even, even after you just pay basic bills like food, rent, and housing, but you should definitely strive to increase your income so you can get to a point where you can save 15% of your income. That'll usually put you in a nice sweet spot where you'll have enough money for retirement you also have enough money to live your life now. So I like, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It greatly helps out the channel, helps push this video out to as many people as possible. If you enjoy my perspectives and the way I explain things, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Also, I wanna know what do you guys think about these six steps? Is there anything you would have added to it or any steps you would have changed the order on? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Check out all my social medias. I try to post there every day. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.